Now I'm going to begin the review with the Book of Shadows and some of the Witch Tarot's because um, I, I will clarify, I am pagan but I am not a witch. I'm a pagan and one of the, my core beliefs is that as pagans we have the right to choose um, to alter and change our beliefs as as truths that we experience within our life are un uh, uh, unveiled. And having said that, this is the epitome of exactly that. Um, so, first off, what I want to say is not all guidebooks are created equal. I think that here in the year 2015, we have color and we are able to use it. And this deck here was designed, I'll go more into the book later, but this deck was designed brilliantly so that you could purchase first the, oh, let's get the right deck here, you could, this is what came, this is, this is the deck that came with the packaging of the Book of Shadows Tarot. So one of the things that I like very much about this deck, um, great cards, great card stock. Um, this in particular, all, all of the, the decks with this group are reversible and it's not too busy. It's got uplifting cards. So yeah, I really enjoy this deck. It was the deck that came and uh, it is I'll set that on this side. It's a beautiful deck. Very, very, um, I'm very connected with it. And how it was designed is that it had the other deck that was as above. This was the as above and this was the as below. And it's got a different back, just slight different coloring. I'll, I'm going to pull the two images up there so that you can see them both. But they work very harmoniously together. <laughs> And there's, in the book, there's many spreads that allow you to work the decks together. And so that you can get a bit of a different understanding is that it's very much um, geared towards, on the surface, the neo-pagan that uh, is new to it, to be, being a witch. But it's also got a little bit of whimsy. Not too much. And when I first saw this deck, honestly, I was disappointed. And I thought, why, you know, why did they go this route? Um, but I started working too, and wow, for shadow work, um, this is dead on. It's absolutely incredible. Easy to shuffle, really easy to work with, and I like that they have the uh, pull that you can take them out of the box with. But it was really, this was the biggest thing um, that I liked that was said here by um, author Barbara Moore. The good thing, and this is important to me, the good thing about the future is that pagans know it isn't written in stone and we have free will and the ability, in large part, to create our own reality. I thought that was really important. I thought that was an important thing to get across to people doing readings. Um, it was in the deck. And this is the book that came with uh, the guy in tarot. It is called The Journey. Uh, journey through the Gaian Tarot, and it is written by Joanna Powell Colbert, and really, really nicely done. Um, I, the only, again, a complaint that I have here that isn't hers. It's it's going back to Llewellyn. I'm going to show you a few of these just to show you. Uh, it's a bit of my peeve here. This one, and. Take a look at this. Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, you see the white line that shows on the outside of the book? I can't see it really well. Let me close this shut so you can see. There's a white line that isn't this. It's, it's, there's no white line on the outside of this book. But you see the image here? No matter what I do, there's a white line. It was the same with the um, with Joanna's Journey Through the Gaian. The same thing. You see the white line that shows up when I squish it together like that? Not cool. These are all books that have been now here again. I'll show you. This is Gateway to the Divine Tarot, another deck I love. 
no white line and then suddenly there's a white line. Seriously guys, you're a publishing company. This is done by Los Caravillo. And when I saw it, I just went, wow, magic. I mean, it opens up, it holds the book up on the top and here. It's got the, the ribbon to, to pull the deck out. Wow, wow, Llewellyn, take a look. Sorry. <laughs> um, that's how it can be done. And let's pull out the deck. One of the really nice things, if you take a look at what they did, Take a look at what they did. They also created the bag that uh, is the perfect complement to this deck. Dough borders. Now, some people are not fond of digitally uh, designed images. I love them. I have no qualms at all. If they, if I can read, it's <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't matter how it's been done. And you know, your double card isn't too terrifying. It's just, I really like everything about this deck. Can't say anything else. It's just a beautiful, beautiful imagery. Another beautiful deck here. And this is, um, I, I will warn you, there is nudity in some of the images. But this is a Schiffer um, published tarot. Um, the images and the text were all done by Marie White. So this was completely done um, herself. Just show you some of the images nice quality cards. They're just beautiful. I really love the ravens in this deck too. It's gorgeous. This is probably one of my favorites. I absolutely love those owls. Just love the owls in this deck. Alright, let's take a look now at... This is a, a deck that I cr really enjoyed. I love being part of... Um, the creation and being seeing what was coming about. Um, first they were in the Kickstarter. We got a chance to watch as some of the cards were being created. We saw posts on the 78 Tarot um, website as well as uh, they're on Facebook, 78 Tarot. And we got to see it come to being and that's, <laughs> that's a lot of fun for me. Um, this card is my favorite for shuffling. There's a core in the card. They're absolutely gorgeous. They've got good bending. Just some of the imagery that you can see. We also had Jasmine Beckett involved with this group. Um, oh, I always love this card. I love these cats. Joanna Nelson. And it's it takes a different turn too. Like these are all really beautifully created cards with completely different um, feel but it, it works as a deck. Um, Larry Elmore, he does a lot of the fantasy and science fiction um, illustrations. And the sun card is done by the creator Katie Welsh. Um, beautiful story behind this, a beautiful story behind the creation. We have one of the best illustrations that I have seen with the lovers. And that card is done by Delphine Levesque de Mers. She's also one of the co-founders with 78 Tarot. And she's she's got cards in all of them that are coming up. Uh, but they're just brilliant. Just brilliant cards. Love them. Okay. Before I go away, before I started doing the reading, I am a crazy, crazy collector of essential oils and I don't fool around. This is my um, Pure Essential Sweet Orange Oil. I mix that with a little bit of cloves oil and cinnamon and oh, delicious. I love the smell and it puts me in a real nice frame of mind. This is by Schiffer as well called the Dream Raven Tarot by Beth Silenon and we have our book and I am not um, as familiar with this as I should be, simply because it's just come, but it's top a favorite of mine simply because of its packaging. And look at these cards. <laughs> I love the backs. The colors are, are colors that I am not normally using, and I've really been trying to stretch out beyond uh, sort of my gothic looks, but look at the images on this. 
the colors, you know, they truly depict the card as the Nine of Wands here. Um, oops, that's the page, the Page of Wands. Look at the color on him. And the Ace of Wands. I could go on looking at these forever. So this is a deck that whether I ever um, use as reading, uh, the imagery is just incredible. All right, so that is the Dream Raven Tarot. And we are not finished here. Now another deck that I want to show you is the Raven's Prophecy because this is again another color that I'm not really used to using and I was really influenced by Halloween and the oranges but when this deck arrived and I saw the colors on it I was not disappointed. This is incredible. Um, the imagery in this deck is just beyond fantastic. I am so thrilled that I got this deck. Um, I don't have the book right here with me, but I wanted to make sure and mention this deck for anyone who's considering it. It's got some other imagery as well in it. Um, like This is my favorite uh, for color. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so I wanted to mention that. That also was put out uh, by Llewellyn. The ones I want to show you now. Um, well, this is, this is a deck. This is actually one of the first that I bought. But I am so happy that I got them. This is Cats, the Baroque Bohemian Cats Tarot. And what I was first really attracted to is when I saw the image, the borders. I really like that on this big card. And then, of course, who cannot fall in love with these cats? Here we go. <sighs> Look at this for the chariot. Oh my god. I just, when I saw these, I was floored. I could not believe it. And then I, I started to connect with them. <laughs> I started to have my favorite. I could go on with this forever because there is not a cat image here that isn't perfect for the card. You get the, you get the idea. This is the Baroque Bohemian Cats. Really nice coloring. You can see it. And while I'm mentioning them, I'm just going to speak about their, their also their version of the Victorian Romantic Tarot, the Gothic Tarot, one of my favorites. Uh, one more that I'll show you. This is, and this is the Fairy Tale Tarot. Here's the backs. I love the backs. And they also have the beautiful gold border, which I really enjoy. It's like the chariot. <laughs> wow. For the Snow Queen. And it's all based on fairy tale characters. So, Again, this was Magic Realist Press at the time. But all the books that, that they have come out are just a really good read. They're really good stories. And they, they do help you understand the card as well. Now I'm going to show you a deck here that I love because even the, the not the limited edition, you see the reflection here and reflection on the gold in the top there and reflection on the rocks for the emperor, reflection of the lavender in the background that's growing. The High Priestess, we have some reflection on the clock. Um, you can see on the ba in the background there the reflection. This, um, how they did the foil on this is actually superior to anything that I've seen. Um, I'm going to go through so I can see this is one of them that I like. The cards all reflect. Um, going through those. I love the Ellis Tarot. I think it is the most brilliantly done. Um, I'm going to show you the backs. And the backs are nice finished, but they're like a satin. There's not any reflection really on them. But I'll show you. And these are out of print, so they're hard to find now. But when you see the backs of these big Ellis cards, unbelievable. And this is a bigger version of what I've just shown you. 
So all the cards, if you look in here, they've got reflection as well there. And I'm not going to take them out because I want them to just sit in there. But what packaging? I, I have yet to see anything that is as incredible as this. Nice big cards. And that is my review of the decks that I have. I know I missed some. I'm sorry if there's some of you that... Uh, some that I've said that I love and I haven't shown them here. But um, I tried to get to gather together the ones that, uh, that, uh, that are in my mind as extremely special. Some of the were decks. Um, and I did have a, a bit of a... What I tried to use, when you speak to what is a favorite, I have... Oh, they were, I knew there was one I wanted to show you. This is my favorite, the Hierophant. It has the uh, reflection, <laughs> sorry I checked off topic there, but it's got some of the reflection in the um, Hierophant's pipe. And this is all gold in the back for the devil, and he's the Jabberwocky. Most appealing, not my favorite, but it absolutely appeals to me, is the Ten of Cups, where they're sitting down for their tea party. So that has been my, rev my review of my favorites. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, Gothic Angel saying bye for now.